morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Alicia Cordes, Communications Director at DEED. Appreciate your patience, having a few technical difficulties on our end, but happy to have you with us. Uh, to mitigate echoes, please keep your devices muted. We'll take questions at the end, and if you have any uh, technical difficulties, please reach out to Dawn and putting her name in the chat. So again, uh, thank you for joining us. And with that, over to you, Commissioner Verilek. And we're going to have Commissioner off off camera today uh, just because of the technicalities. But thanks so much for joining us. Great, thanks, Alicia. Yes, and the technical difficulties we've referred to are the fact that my internet service seems to be a little flaky today. So I'm wearing one of my best sport coats, but you don't get to see it because it's <laughs> off camera. Sorry about that. Um, well, we are excited to talk about our most recent employment data, and I'm very pleased to say that this was really a great month for jobs in Minnesota. In fact, it was our best month for job growth in more than two years. Specifically, as you can see on the slide, Minnesota employers added 14,400 new jobs in the month of August, and that is the highest number of new positions added since July of 2022. On a percentage basis, Minnesota job growth in August was 0.5%, which is five times faster than the national rate. And in addition, there's more good news when we look under the hood. Last month, although I wasn't with you for this, but we reported a small loss of jobs. I think it was 1,100 positions. But the BLS, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, has since revised those numbers as they do. And in fact, we gained 2,500 jobs from June to July. So taken together, that means we've seen net job gains in nine out of the last 12 months, and that our job growth over the year is just slightly off the national pace. Our strong wage growth continued this month as well, with wages growing twice as fast as inflation. So the average private sector hourly wage is now $37.74 in Minnesota, which is an increase of 5.9% over the year. For comparison, the consumer price index, the CPI, which is of course a common measure of inflation, rose only 2.5% over that time. So again, that comparison is a 5.9% wage increase compared to 2.5% growth in inflation, which is good. Unemployment rate, we did see a small increase of 0.1% over the month, landing at a current rate of 3.3%, which is still well below the national figure. And then when it comes to the size of the labor force, we were essentially flat over the month. And in reality, our labor force does need to grow in order to power more hiring and thus more economic growth. So this remains a strong area of focus for us, which we will discuss in a little bit. But overall, the jobs report contains really some great news. We saw strong job gains, continued demand for more workers, which illustrates strong demand for the goods and services that Minnesota employers produce. And fast wage growth means that Minnesota workers are bringing home more pay at a faster rate than inflation. All this also comes just days after Deed reported surging exports during the most recent quarter, in which Minnesota sold more goods to foreign buyers than all but eight other states. So we are very excited to continue building on this momentum. And as I mentioned earlier, one of the ways we do that is by increasing the number of workers in the labor force. And we are very appreciative that Governor Walls has proclaimed. September officially as Workforce Development Month in Minnesota. And this is a great opportunity for us to highlight the ways the entire administration is investing in our economic future by recruiting and retaining workers and making sure Minnesota is creating the jobs of the future right here at home. Uh, this week, I co-wrote an op-ed along with five other Walls Flanagan commissioners for the Duluth News Tribune to highlight the ways we are working to create a high-skilled job ready workforce and I think I see Devin just put a link to that op-ed in the chat so check that out and honestly there's so much work going on across the administration to help our, our workforce take off that I sometimes struggle to remember it all and so I like to use the acronym right to remember everything we're doing that's w-r-i-t-e and so we like to think of it as the fact that we are working to write the future of Minnesota's workforce and what we mean by that is number one welcoming new Minnesotans, that's W. Secondly, retaining our young people and families for R, including often overlooked workers for I, 
targeting key high growth, high need sectors. That's letter T. And then finally, letter E, enhancing worker well-being. So W-R-I-T-E. And the message I want people to take away from our Workforce Development Month is that our goals are ambitious but attainable. Our strategies are wide-ranging but increasingly aligned with partners in the private sector and across state government. And then, as I told the attendees at what was a great second annual Workforce Development Summit that we put on in Duluth last week, we have a historic opportunity to strengthen our already world-class Minnesota workforce, and we're going to take that opportunity. So with that, I will hand things off to Labor Market Information Director Angelina Nguyen for a deeper dive on the details of this month's great report. Thank you, Commissioner Verilak. I am going to go over the job growth, uh, over the month job growth details by super sector. So eight super sectors out of 11 uh, gain jobs on a seasonally adjusted basis over the month. And I'm gonna uh, list them in order of number of jobs gained. So leisure and hospitality led with 4,300 jobs, uh, up 1.6%. Next is education and health services gained 4,200 jobs, up 0.7%. Professional and business services was uh, the third super sector, gaining 3,900 jobs, up 1.1%. Government gained 1,400 jobs, up 0.3%. Trade, transportation, and utilities gained 1,000 jobs, up 0.2%. Other services gained 800 jobs, uh, which is a 0.7% growth. Information gained 400 jobs, up 1%. 1%, uh, and financial activities gain 100 jobs, up 0.1%. And we saw three super sectors lost jobs over the month. And again, I'll mention them in the order of number of jobs lost. Um, so construction lost the most jobs, um, 900 jobs, down 0.7%. Manufacturing lost 700 jobs, down 0.2%. And mining and logging lost 100 jobs, down 1.5%. So overall, the gains were much bigger than the losses. And so over the month, um, Minnesota as a whole gained 14,400 jobs on a seasonally adjusted basis. And that is a 0.5% uh, growth rate. Uh, the private sector gained 13,000 jobs, also up 0.5%. And as uh, Commissioner Verilek had mentioned, the prior month report for July, uh, seasonally adjusted job growth was revised up by 3,600 jobs. So the final estimate is that we gained uh, 2,500 jobs between June and July, rather than the originally um, estimated 1,100 job loss. Next, I'm going to talk about uh, our labor force. So big picture, our labor force size decreased by 248 people over the month, which is uh, basically a, a statistically a flat change. Um, so currently for August, we total 3,093,000 and around 900 um, people in the labor force. Uh, over the month, uh, the number of employed people decreased by about 6,000 and the number of unemployed increased by about um, 5,700. Our labor force uh, is still 37,700 workers smaller than it was pre-pandemic um, in February 2020. Our labor force participation rate decreased one tenth of a percentage point um, to 67.7%. Uh, but looking at the longer run, it has hovered around 68% um, in the years coming out of the pandemic. All right. And then next, we're going to look at over the year um, uh, job change. So over the year, uh, we, we still see stable positive uh, job growth. So Minnesota gained about 41,700 payroll jobs over the year, which is a 1.4% growth rate. Uh, the U.S., by comparison, uh, had a growth rate of 1.5%. Um, Minnesota's private sector gained about 20,600 jobs over the year, uh, which is a 0.8% growth rate, and U.S. private sector grew 1.4%. So looking at Minnesota, um, five super sectors posted uh, positive job growth over the year and six uh, had negative uh, job loss. So I'm going to start with the gainers. 
um, again, in the order of number of jobs gained. So education and health services led with almost 40,000 jobs uh, gained over the year, which is a 7.1% growth for Minnesota. Um, and that's outpacing the national growth rate of 3.9% for the super sector. And growth was strong in all the subsectors uh, under education and health services for Minnesota. Uh, second was government. The, this super sector gains more than 21,000 jobs, up 5.4%, and more than twice the growth rate of um, the U.S. at 1.9%. Uh, um, and again, growth was healthy across almost all subsectors under government, except for the U.S. Postal Service. We saw a decline of 0.4% there. Uh, third is leisure and hospitality. This super sector gained more than 5,500 jobs over the year, so that's a 1.9% growth rate. And most sub subsectors grew. Um, uh, the only two subsectors that did not grow were arts, entertainment, and recreation, which uh, uh, lost 4.2% of jobs, and accommodation, which lost about 5% of jobs. Um, but every other sector, subsector under leisure and hospitality have seen uh, job gains. And nationally, for comparison, um, leisure and hospitality grew 1.7%. Other services uh, is also uh, the, is the next gainer, gaining more than 3,200 jobs over the year, so growing 2.8%. And all subsectors posted growth uh, uh, in Minnesota. And for comparison, nationally, um, this super sector grew 1.1%. And then lastly, trade, transportation, and utilities gained 794 jobs over the year, uh, a growth rate of 0.1%. Um, retail trade declined a little bit, um, and wholesale trade declined uh, more, uh, but transportation, warehousing, and utilities grew. Um, and for comparison, this super sector uh, at, the, at the U.S. level grew 0.8%. All right, now I'm going to talk about the uh, the the super sectors that lost jobs, and again in the order of the number of jobs lost. So professional and business services lost um, ab about 12,600 jobs, down 3.2 percent, while the U.S. grew 0.4 percent. Um, and notable declines under professional and business services are um, management of companies and enterprises. Uh, employment services, uh, services to buildings and dwellings, and computer systems design and related services. Manufacturing lost about 7,000 jobs, down 2.1%, and all subsectors experienced decline in Minnesota except for food manufacturing, which grew 2%, and transportation equipment manufacturing, which grew 0.2%. Um, the U.S. manufacturing super sector also declined over the year by 0.1%. Uh, and financial services lost about 4,700 jobs over the year, down 2.5%. And we saw losses across all subsectors. Um, nationally, financial services grew 0.4%. And then information um, lost almost 2,400 jobs, down 5.3% over the year. And again, all subsectors saw decline um, in Minnesota. Um, and nationally, this super sector grew 0.1%. And construction also saw some job loss of around uh, 2,200 jobs uh, over the year, down 1.5%. And all subsectors uh, experienced loss except for building equipment contractors, which grew 1.5%. And for comparison, the U.S. construction super sector grew 2.8% over the year. And then lastly, mining and logging uh, lost 150, jo 100, yes, 150 jobs over the year, um, which is a 2.2% decline in Minnesota. And the U.S. also saw declined in the super sector down 1.2%. All right, um, and then lastly, I'm going to talk about wages and inflation. Um, average hourly wages for all private sector workers increased nine cents um, over the month for Minnesota. So for August, the average hourly wage was thirty-seven dollars and seventy-four cents. Um, over the year, it increased more than two dollars, uh, which is, uh, as Commissioner Barrera like had mentioned, a five point nine percent wage growth rate nationally. Um, Private sector wages increased eight cents over the month and over the year grew 3.8%. So both 
for Minnesota and for the U.S., um, wage growth beat inflation. Um, inflation has been tamed uh, and is is ha has been low. So for August, the uh, CPI inflation index was 2.5 percent. Um, and so we've continuing uh, to see this trend of of uh, strong wage growth, both for Minnesota and for the U.S. Um, all right, and that's all I have. Commissioner, back to you. Thanks, Angelina. And again, for joined, I started my I'm more because I continue to have a little bit of an unstable internet situation this morning. So apologies for that. But uh, with that information having been shared, we're going to open things up for any questions. So I'll uh, I hope out here. I think uh, Max, over to you, please. Good morning. Good morning. This is Max Nostrak with Minnesota Reformer. Um, I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit more about why we're seeing um, unemployment tick up with the strong job growth. Is that driven by layoffs or what's going on there? Yeah, that's a that's a great question, Max. So we we're using uh, two different data sources. Uh, so one is about job growth, which can which um, estimates the number of payroll jobs as reported by employers. And then the other data source is um, based on households. Um, so like the base at, at individuals, which then estimates number of people who are employed, unemployed, uh, number of people in the labor force, and, and therefore um, our unemployment rate. So because there are two different data sources, some most of the time they align and, and change in the same direction, but sometimes we see them going in different directions, and this month happens to be um, that kind of month. Um, so job growth is looking good. Um, UI uh, unemployment insurance uh, claims actually have decreased uh, both over the month and over the year. Um, and as well for the JOLT survey, which is a different uh, data source that we uh, um, uh, also use to help us see the big picture. JOLT is uh, jobs openings and labor turnover survey. Um, we're seeing the labor market moving towards uh, a more equilibrium point. So there are, for every job opening, there are now um, uh, fewer unemployed people than we had seen before. Um, so the data source that where we get the unemployment um, and employment numbers is called Laos, um, Local Area Unemployment Statistics. Um, it includes populations that aren't included in the job survey. So like it also includes people who are self-employed or business owners. Um, so that could uh, may explain the difference in um, the, the direction of change that we're seeing. Um, so yes, unemployment rate ticked up a little bit um, to 3.3%. Um, and we do see from the, the labor force data source that more people are unemployed. Um, but it's it's a very small change uh, in unemployment rate, and it, overall, it's still a low unemployment rate. Um, and yeah, that really the explanation is is two different data sources, and it just happens to uh, go in different directions this month. Thanks, Angela. Can I just have a follow up? Um, just, but didn't you also say like the number of total jobs in the state has also declined, like the the number of workers declined? Um, no, so the number of jobs grew over the month and over the year. Um, so over the month, we saw um, more than 14,000 jobs gained. And over the year, we saw about like 40,000 jobs gained. Um, so jobs, the, the jobs data source uh, says that jobs are growing. The labor force size has declined by 248 people. So like a really small uh, decline in the context of um, more than 3 million workers. Got it. Thank you. Thanks, Max. Uh, other questions? Can I I'll ask another one if um, nobody else is in line? Um, can you 
it was hard. It was a little bit hard for me to tell from the graph um, how wages compare from if we looked at that entire period of high inflation. So starting around 2021 until now, I mean, you said wages are are I think double inflation now over the year. But if we if we zoomed out to those three years, have um, have wages outpaced um, inflation from 2021 in Minnesota? That is a great question, Max. Um, I would have to do some math and, and email you later if, um, if that's okay. So over I, I, the general answer is for the last um, more like 14 months or so, um, wage growth has outpaced inflation. Um, but we, and we used to track the three year um, wage change. Um, we stopped doing that since inflation has been uh, tame for a while, but I, I will do the math and get back to you on that question. Thank you so much. Any other questions? Anybody want me to repeat our clever acronym? Right? Kidding. And I just have one one final question is if if anybody from D wanted to respond to this news of the interest rate drop and and if you think um, what effect that will have? Will that have it? You know, we're seeing declining construction jobs. Is that going to turn that around? Yeah, I'm going to comment on that one. No one can predict precisely how big and how fast of an impact the change will have, but we do know that directionally it's going to make things. If you were someone going to buy a house and, and rely on a mortgage to do so, and likewise, uh, your uh, consumer loan uh, that you might need, I think you see in the chart that you were just referring to, Max, that uh, unemployment, or rather the um, inflation has declined significantly into that zone where the Fed feels comfortable. And so for us to have quite strong economic indicators right now, and Fed loosening monetary policy in a way that's going to unleash some uh, consumer spending, we would think um, that all bodes quite well. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Max. So if anyone has additional questions, um, please reach out to Mary Haugen. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I missed D. D, do you have a question? Thanks for joining us. Yeah, I do. Thank you. A uh, quick question. Sorry, it's reverberating. I wondered if you might go into a little detail on what you're seeing with retail jobs and the decline during the month. Yes, thank you for the question, D. With retail. Can you decline over the month? Um, so we're seeing, I think, okay. So over the month, retail grew. Um, so it gained 1,100 jobs, which is a 0.4% um, growth. And let me double check. Um, I think you may have heard me talk about over the year change. Angelina, yeah, it was we, over the year. Yeah, over the year. Do we want to follow up on this one uh, directly? Or do you, we could do that by email just to make sure you have a chance to look at the numbers? Yeah, um, yeah. The, does email. that work for you, Dee? We can we can follow up and yes. any additional questions. Wonderful. That'll be just fine. Excellent. Thanks, Dee. Um, well, thank you all again for joining us. Again, if you have additional questions, please do reach out to Mary Haugen. Her um, email is over in the chat. And with that, I'll turn it to you, Commissioner Verilek, to close us out today. Sounds great. Thank you.
caution the wind and come back on camera and hope it works. Everybody joining us this morning. And just to recap, we had our strongest growth over years with an addition of 15,400 jobs in August. This economy remains in a strong place with job growth that is positive, unemployment that is low, is outpacing inflation, uh, labor force participation among the nation, and businesses expanding while many exports surge. During workforce September, we're focused on increasing the number of skilled and work ready Minnesotans in the labor force as we are all year round. So, hope you be joining us for the next employment numbers release, which will be on October 17th. And uh, thank you again. Have a good day. Thanks, everyone. Bye bye. Thanks, everyone.